So what I have here is an ultrasonic cleaner, sometimes used in the jewelry industry. And this one has an ability to uh, heat up and also has an ability at the same time to shoot uh, ultrasonic waves through the water. I've got a plastic bag over it because I'm going to make a little mess here. And what I have here is cold Diet Coke and warm Diet Coke. And what I'm looking to do is I'm going to exchange these tops for drilled out holes on these tops. And when we turn this on, we're going to get ourselves, hopefully, a geyser, much like you've seen in other places. And we're going to create nucleation sites that the CO2 can collect and become bigger bubbles and leave this solution when I turn the ultrasonic cleaner on because the ultrasonic cleaner is going to create standing compression waves in the bottom of the bottle and that's going to create nucleation sites for the small um, bubbles of CO2 to attract other bubbles. And you think about it, attractive forces, the London dispersion forces that CO2 has with itself, it's going to be greater than that for water. So we're going to do all of that down here and of course you've got volumes of or milliliters of water in between the bigger bubbles, less dense, buoyant bubbles that we're going to create below, and we should create geysers. Now my test today is going to see if the height of the geyser would be greater with the colder Diet Coke or the warmer Diet Coke, and I'm looking to test for the solubility of a gas and, and in terms of temperature, how temperature affects that. So we're going to back up and we're going to try to see if we can observe a difference in the geyser that comes out of these sodas in terms of solubility. 